Advancing battlefield control. Stand by. Primary objective achieved. Welcome back, Commander. Hello everyone, Xian Tan here, and today I'm going to be talking about the third of my fundamental FC, uh, and that is target prioritization. Target prioritization is something that quite a lot of FCs, you know, uh, it's something that new FCs especially uh, focus way too heavily on, but I still want to go over it as it is kind of a core part of FC. It's, you know, it encompasses a lot, quite honestly, and that's why I don't call it target calling or, you know, what to primary or something like that, because it's not just thinking about the first thing that you're going to be killing or you know the order in which you want to kill their fleet it's thinking about you know the previous plans that you've generated and what sticking points you run into and kind of working around them i find that people who are very very good at target prioritization are people who will you know have you know a lot of understanding of how the fight is going on and then using that to determine uh, what they then need to deal with and from that what they then need to shoot or put Ewar on uh, and that's why I called it target prioritization because it's not uh, a simple here's what you should shoot first there we go done it, you know and it's not just here's the key threats that we talked about earlier deal with them change your positioning done there's a lot of nuance in it there's a lot of uh, thinking about how things change within your plan uh, and that's why I wanted to talk about it a bit more as I think a lot of new FCs both you know Un overestimate how important it is, but also underestimate the nuance of it. So the first thing I want to bring up when it comes to target prioritization is reassessing your plan. We talked earlier about how to identify the key threats to your own composition, but sometimes you know you aren't able to plan around them effectively, something changes, or you simply don't execute on your plan as perfectly as you could have. And it's in these scenarios that a really good FC will shine through because they'll be able to take what they thought they were going to do, assess what they're lacking in, re-identify key threats on them, you know, immediately, you know, uh, and the great way to do this is just to figure out what they're shooting and figure out what's letting them, you know, then either break your tank or come very, very close to it. Uh, and this can be things just as simple as, you know, what, having a ton of webs on the field or them just having too much DPS. I know a trap that I often fall into is that I will over-focus on support. I will focus too hard on logistics or, you know, or recons. And in doing so, I will be trading, you know, one for one support for support. Uh, and then, you know, once those support are down, maybe their doctrine has an advantage against mine simply because they don't, you know, they have maybe better application or something like that. And that's something that you've got to be able to take into account, because that will mean that a different thing uh, becomes your priority. Uh, in that case in, in particular, you have to realize pretty quickly that your support is dying. You need to pull back, you need to get your support safe and away from the fire so that you can concentrate on killing their DPS before using your support again and going back in. And that just doesn't that doesn't just involve reassessing you know the situation and re-identifying the key threats that also involves uh you know understanding how to put yourself in a position to then attack those key threats you need to be able to reposition basically you've got to go through everything we went through before in the uh positioning stage about identifying a plan and you need to go through that very very quickly and very very fast and that is one of the reasons why target prioritization is so so uh, is so so difficult because it's effectively doing a lot of uh, making a lot of very very small decisions very very quickly the second thing i want to go over uh, is probably the one that most people will associate with target prioritization and that's just execution and uh, what i mean by that is knowing basically how to call targets how to get your fleet to follow your orders in a reasonable way. Uh, and this is something that a lot of people who are aspiring FCs, but who've never really gone into it, you know, and just straight out done it, will struggle with because those kind of people are just not natural FCs. It's something that they've got to learn over time. And this is something that I struggle with myself. I'm not a natural FC. I'm someone who, uh, you know, does freeze at times, who does make mistakes. 
and I have very, you know, I have very big problems with accepting my own mistakes. But it's something that you can never let show to your fleet. As an FC, they have to be very, very confident in you, and they have to feel like you know what you're doing, even when you don't. Because you are making all the decisions for them, and it is your job to not only make those decisions, but ensure that they follow them. And to do this, you want to be calling in a calm and consistent manner. If people start splitting fire or start fucking up, one of the best ways to get them back on point is to go for a target that might not be optimal, but you know will die very, very quickly, call off one or two of them, get people into the flow of just kill the target, kill the target, kill the target, then switch back to the more difficult targets. This is something that, you know, might not be optimal in a block level, but when you're just learning to FC, or even if you're just doing it in a kind of a smaller environment, you know, 50, 60 people, that can really, really help focus people down and that will help you execute on your plans properly. And those are the main things that you need to focus on when it comes to target prioritization. I feel that it's something that a lot of people have written a lot of articles on, and it's something that does just come very naturally with time. It's all about making your decisions quickly, smartly, and efficiently, whilst giving your fleet the confidence to then do them. And beyond that, everything else is just a stylistic choice. Everything else is just what you, as an FC, feel is going to be the best way for you to do your job. Which is why I wanted to not harp on at this as much as uh, I possibly could have. I could have gone into individual matchups, and I could have gone into, you know, a lot more details. However, I don't think that that's best, because you simply don't gain anything from it, because you will disagree, and therefore you're not learning from me. Uh, and whilst there is something to be said for giving out advice that people might disagree with, in this case, I didn't, in, the, in this series in particular, I didn't want to go over it. However, I will give a, uh, I will still give a doctrine to try out when it comes to this fleet. Uh, and that's going to be Malas. Uh, and I know Malas are not well loved within the uh, T1 cruiser line. They're a bit weird. They can't really fit everything that you want to fit onto them. However, they do have probably one of the most target prioritization reliant um, modes of engagement uh, that I think any T1 cruiser gives you. And that's because you have two mids that you can simply just use for E-War because there's nothing else good you can put in them. Uh, they have range to be able to deal with Caracals. Uh, they have the DPS to be able to deal with Vexes. But that's only when you're able to utilize those mids properly. And that relies on you calling not only targets for your guns, but getting your fleet to spread your E-War effectively. To do that, you generally want to use the naming technique. Tell people to look you know, for someone whose name is close to theirs in terms of first letter uh, and put their e on it. You'll also need to decide what you want to put your e on. on. This, this isn't always going to be the DPS. Typically I'll fit these with damps as that will give me the ability to choose whether I want to force the enemy DPS to come in closer to me by using range scripts or if I want to bring the logistics closer to me if they are in a close enough uh, ranged fleet where that is likely to be the case, uh, or if I'm, you know, if I'm confident I can still do enough damage at range to then kill uh, a fleet, what I will do is I'll put scan res scripts in and I'll put those on the logistics to give my fleet more time to then burn through them even whilst they are at range. And basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out what the key problems your fleet is going to have with their fleet and how you can then prioritize it, prioritize your e-war to take care of that. And that's another level of target calling that you've got to keep in mind uh, during the fleet, is you can tell people to switch them to your caracals, or you can tell them to switch them back to logi or something like that. And it gives a lot of adaptability to the fleet, even if it doesn't have a huge amount of strength built into it as a whole. Still, unlike the previous two exam the previous two fundamentals, the best way to learn this is simply to do it. 
Target prioritization is something that you can't practice on your own because the key failures in it are not likely to be with your knowledge base or your understanding of the game. They're to do with how you, through sheer rote you know, understanding of how fights operate, um, how they change, how they, you know, how they develop, how they evolve in ways that you might not expect, and the best way to use the specific doctrine that you're using against it. Uh, and that's something that takes a lot of time because first of all you've got to get through you know the combat shakes if you thought the combat shakes in solo pvp were bad wait until you have the combat shakes because you've got you know a hundred people waiting for you to make a decision and if you fuck up they're all dead that is some that can be you know some of the biggest pressures in the game but it can also be so incredibly rewarding when you do it right when you know when you pull it off when you pull off a good fleet where all of your calls were crisp and calm and you positioned yourself perfectly that is quite honestly one of the best feelings in the game in my opinion it is the feeling of using every single tool you had and winning and there's nothing more i can say about that <laughs>